2010, the finances were very, very difficult in our life. And we just never stopped. You know, some people, like, they want to get depressed. They want to pull the cover the covers up over their head. Um, but both my husband and I, we really had absolutely nowhere to turn. And we just literally kept praying and pushing and selling. And we sold everything on different local classified ads. We sold beds and computers and cars and air conditioners and anything we could put our hands on. Um, so... Um, one day we sold an air conditioner and I used to be a very, very well respected real estate agent and investor. And they used to call me Donna Trump. And at this point we had just sold an air conditioner and I was so excited. I took my $65 and I ran to the grocery store. And the weirdest thing about me that day was I remember thinking since I only had $65, which seemed like a lot of money to me at the time. I would fill up the entire cart with everything that I thought we needed. And then when I got to the counter, the cashier, I was going to just take a little bit out here. Well, how much is this and how much is that? And just play around at the cash register to maximize the $65. And I'm in the grocery store and I walk by. I remember I was right in front of like the meat department and I ran into a former client friend and she said, hi how you doing and we both were talking about the crisis and we were going back and forth and I said I'm just so excited and I opened my fist and I showed her the $65 I said we just sold an air conditioner I'm so excited now I can buy groceries and she looked at me remembering the old Molly and she looked at me she's like are you really serious you just sold an air conditioner to eat I was like yeah 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 I'm really excited I have $65 and I remember the expression on her face was like she just was in shock that that my situation was that dire and we parted and that was the end of that and I continued to fill up my cart and as I got to the checkout lane she was in one of them and I didn't want to be behind her first of all I didn't want to embarrass myself um, how much is this and how much is that and I also didn't want her to feel pressure like I was you know trying to get help of some sort so I remember seeing another girl in another lane that is or coming towards me she only had a few items in her and I said hi Alexandra how are you here you want to go in front of me oh thank you thank you I'm so glad that she was going in the middle to buffer between me and and my friend Rosa Correa and so we're in the line and I start loading all my groceries onto the car onto the the conveyor belt and all of a sudden Alexandra cuts out She's like, oh, I, bye, I got to go. You know, she found a shorter lane. And all of a sudden, I was found myself behind Rosa, which I absolutely didn't want. But I already had all my groceries up on the conveyor belt. And even now, in describing and relaying the story to you, it's kind of hard to explain because you just look at me and think, what did you have $200 worth of groceries for? And I started to put the things up on the conveyor belt. And she leaned over and told the cashier, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I guess I felt I knew what was happening. But on the other hand, I was so unlike me to let it to let someone else pay, pay my groceries. So as it turned out, the groceries that you can see I have here in the list came to $235 and 15 cents with the taxes. And Rosa had leaned over and told the cashier, keep going keep going keep going keep going and the groceries did, they miraculously were Rosa just paid for everything and the at the end I'm crying the cashier's crying Rosa's crying and it was just this incredible incredible blessing and you know I know that God had her planted there for a reason and I knew that God just wants the opportunity if we just put the faith my faith was So I just keep recording and keep recording and keep recording. It looks like I lost my connection. Sorry.